hey y'all welcome back to another video it's Corinna Liza and if you're new here like I said it's Corinna Liza like comment and subscribe um by the title today as you can see we're doing what's in my work bag um slash what if you're a nursing student what could be in your clinical bag um so this is just for nursing students new grads you know if you want to watch you can watch stay tuned like comment and subscribe but yeah, um, I've been working, so I haven't been able to do a video. And now that I'm off, I'm like, you know, let's do what's in my bag because we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. So, yeah, stay tuned. Hey, yeah. All right. So how I was kind of mentioning in the intro, um, as a new grad, like I had like this aesthetic of like what I wanted to do. Um, so I bought this Lululemon bag. It's like a nice big, ooh, not like a dust on it. I haven't worn it in a while. But yeah, so I had this Lululemon bag. It's just kind of like real spacious and whatnot. And you know, some pockets here, which I still have like full stuff in it. Um, And then like a big pocket here. This was like my bag for a minute because, hold on, it does this on the sides. So it does like this so it can like be tight and sealed with a like a Lululemon clip on it. This was in my bag for a minute. I'm not going to lie. But the problem that I had was like I had such a large lunchbox because I was packing snacks and stuff. I had like binders and stuff. So it was just getting bulky and I was walking around like just with heavy like bulky looking bag. And that's not really my style. At first like I was like I promise y'all like I'm a purse girl. I'm not a book bag girl. But... I am a book bag girl for my book bag. So I have this Vera Bradley denim bag. And if y'all know, if y'all really know me, um, I love Vera Bradley. I literally, high school, college, had Vera Bradley book bags, Vera Bradley sleeping bedding, like just everything Vera Bradley. I really love Vera Bradley. And honestly, they should sponsor me with the amount of stuff that I have, like purses. Just, it's just crazy. But anyway, um, my mom gave this to me um, when I was about to graduate. I was like, mm-mm, not a book bag girl, not going to do it. But I really love it. And I can identify that it's mine because it's denim and it's very brightly. But yeah, so we're going to hop into what's actually inside the bag. So that was just like my little story of like how I got to this. Versus not being a first girl. So yeah. So we're going to open the front part. Give me okay. So we're going to get into the front part. So here. I have my little brush. You know. Sometimes I may need to pull my hair back. If it's not. You know. Already back. Got my wallet with my AirPods. The AirPods recently have been coming out with the night shift. Like just to be vibing or whatever. During the night, but normally I don't got time to be listening to it. Um, this is like my eye care because I wear contacts, and I got my little eye passion here, and then the actual contact lenses. I got <laughs> lotion. Yes, this is a hospital lotion. Um, it keeps my hands like real moist, real, real, real moist. But um, you know, it so happens to find its way into my book bag. Um, I have ibuprofen, because sometimes I'll be getting a headache over it. I'm trying to, like, get through it. Um, eye drops, which should be in my eye case. I have, like, all types of pens. Um, got some trauma shears. Uh, cough drops and mints in here. And got some tea bags. This tea is really good, like, immune support, stress. Mm, really good but I have that in there I got more pens colored pens to like um when I have like the patient again I sometimes like add stuff or like cross it out do updates in this one so it's different um your girl got tongs because the night shift be making my stomach hurt sometimes like gassy vibes like just sour stomach so if you're like me, have stomach problems, you know, GI probs, Tums are like really good. Um, yeah, I don't really care about that. Um, and then I have like my work badge, I'm trying to like cover this up. And on here, I have like the Holy Spirit Activate, 
one of my nursing school friends got me this and lately I've been feeling it because the past couple shifts that I've been on day shift, I've been really asking God to please help me. Like, for real. Um, I have a Sharpie on here. One of my preceptors gave this to me because I lost one of my markers. And the marker also had like a flashlight attached to it and everything. Lost that. So, your girl got that. Um, got hand sanitizer. Trader Joe's little spray hand sanitizer. Um, you know, more pens and just a mess in here. Then we can get to the side pockets. So, I normally put like water bottle here. And then when the shift's over, put my coffee mug here. Also, my friend Leslie got me this. Everyone loves this cute custom made coffee tumbler. And then my friend Tegan, she got me this, which I mean, I'm not really good with like tracking this. So, but you know, the nurses girls need to stay hydrated. So y'all need to do it. But for me, my life hasn't really allowed me. But yeah, that's what I put in my side pocket when I have emergency and more times. <laughs> so let's get into the bag. So I have a rub cap because sometimes we do emergency procedures like egg lines, central lines, whatever you have it. And I can slap this on my head or sometimes contact room, you know, I got it. Um, This is not my original lunchbox, but I stole this from my mother. Perfect size lunchbox to fit inside here. Before my lunchbox was like really large because I would take like big bulky salads and stuff. But now it'd be frozen meals for me and slap it right in here with my drinks and whatnot. So we got that in there. Then it gets crazy. It gets too crazy in here. Like, I don't want y'all to see it. But I have my stethoscope, which I've had since nursing school. Eleven. Oh my gosh, y'all. It's a Lipman. Come on now. <laughs> um, get yourself one of these because this is really good light. Good. Um, I don't think this has a name on it really. But I have like a couple report sheets, which I need to th like shred some of these because I don't have these patients no more. But normally I keep my report sheets that I get from nurses because, um, you know, like you never know if you're going to have a patient again. And if you have a patient again, you already have like everything play by play that's there. You know, systems, you could just add a little different color and then add your stuff to there. But I'm going to show y'all what I do with my report sheets, which don't have like information of the patient. But I do from 8 o'clock all the way until 1800 like just different stuff that I'm supposed to do. And I started this when I had my ICU practicum because I had ICU um, practicum and it just got too crazy. Like it was just too much going on and I probably, you know, whatever, besides the point rambling. But I found this system that really worked for me when I did it. I was like, let's do like, let's do by each hour what med and what I'm supposed to do because sometimes it's Q1 as nose, Q1 neurovascular, Q1 neuro, like you need to know and stay on top of it. Labs, all that. So that's what I did. Um, I basically put like sometimes, which is, isn't on here, but like all my PRN, so I know like what PRN meds I'm supposed to give, what time I can give them, you know. Gotta know your PRNs. I found that out too. You gotta know your PRNs on top of like your regular meds. Sometimes also meds that you have to give, for example, at 10 o'clock, they're inpatient specific. So then you need to know like, oh, look, I need to look at a patient specific room or message pharmacy because it's not here. So I learned that um, just doing hour by hour and it really works for me. Like satisfaction is just checking stuff off and saying like you gave it, you did it, um, all that. And sometimes you can add like, oh, I need a straight cath at this hour. I need to check a finger stick, give them insulin. Um, other times I put like A-line was placed, Foley was placed because sometimes that's important. Even like extubating the patients like that's important but not if you're not going into icu like still some stuff is important just to put on there so like other nurses say like oh, okay like when was this done and then you can say oh look it was done at this time so that's like really helpful oops sorry um i'm not getting too nitty gritty into there but i also had this notebook which got <laughs> crazy and the original notebook was like for me going into the icu like i need i'm telling y'all like the preceptors that I had, and I'm very blessed and very thankful for them, but they were like asking like, okay, what receptor does the proof of all and DEX respond to? And I just went, I don't know, I just know what they do, how fast they work, 
but you know some of that stuff is kind of important especially if you want to go back to school and whatnot but yeah so i wrote down like perforal dex um fentanyl because we use a lot of fentanyl in the trauma settings um like when tubes are due to be changed you know all that kind of stuff and then I also wrote like Velitri, which Velitri is very specifically like with ECMO and like pulmonary dilators, all that other stuff. Put nutrition. Um, I used to work on an ECMO floor, which they kind of merged with the trauma thing. So I wrote like all my ECMO stuff. So like your girl got it in her back pocket what she's supposed to do with ECMO when she ended up an ECMO patient. Um, then I wrote cardiac stuff for like my strips. Because sometimes QTC is very important, which, you know, if you're already a nurse or, you know, a nursing student, that's just something important because some meds, for example, like Haldol and all that stuff, prolong your QTC. And you just want to keep out, like keep out for those kind of things to make sure your patient doesn't have any um, cardiac dysrhythmias. Um, I did labs, like what's the importance of those, like when you want to replace electrolytes based off of their um, labs. Um, is it A-line waveforms because those are very important. Sometimes your patient's um, A-line is like dampened and then like you're titrating drips off of that when you really shouldn't be because you want to like, you want a good waveform basically. So that's all the stuff that I was writing in there. Um, Like even like end of life care, like what you should be doing, like giving them morphine, like when you should be giving them morphine. Um, It's just like little stuff, chest tubes, all that. I was writing that down. Then it ended up happening that I saved all my... <laughs> on um, report sheets to write down for when um it was time for end of orientation just saying like all the th things that I did and I had it in my book so basically the book bag is full of report sheets and crazy stuff I got highlighters because highlighting your stuff is very important also I did a discharge recently it's about to go off in a tangent very crazy because everyone knows in the ICU you rarely discharge a patient like home or anything so I had to do discharge teaching and like meds are just normal. But for me, it was like very awkward. So I was like, okay, like I know I need to highlight follow-up appointments, meds, like put one there next time to have meds. Highlight is very important. So that's that. Um, I have my N95 in here just in case I have a COVID patient. Do, do, do. And then, Ugh, sorry y'all, I just don't want and then I have like my orientation binder from this new unit. And it is very, 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 very helpful. Crazy, but it's very helpful. Um, so basically in here it just has like what I wrote on sticky notes or like oh goodness, things I haven't done that were like on like when this was orientation. So like I was saying, like I hadn't primed the A-line, which your girl has prime A-lines, prime um central venous uh wow for pressures your right atrium central venous pressure monitoring i've even prompt um prime just like different tubing and stuff like that um i put like i didn't place a ng tube or a core pack your girl did that um having prones which um on ecmo we proned a lot of patients just for like you know respiratory status and stuff like that i was able to prone on the ecmo unit and then also on this unit a couple of times just to see how they do things, which is very different. And then I put like things I've seen or done um, on the unit. So I did like um, when I was decannulating the patient, we did some sedation and paralytics, which I gave, titrating drips, end of life, priming tubing, CRT, like all that kind of stuff, extubations, blah, blah, blah okay more into the binder um so yeah it just has like a welcome all that kind of stuff then it has like you know unit policy kind of stuff like meetings required trainings um like the flow of how your orientation be should be and like where you're at also has like classes like you should be taking a critical care class trauma theory class um ultrasound guided um peripheral ivs which a lot of people do but um I'm not really on that band just yet. I want to like perfect what I'm doing without using technology. Um, EKGs, certifications, license, all that kind of stuff that we should have. Um, give me one second. I'm trying to like, flip through this really quickly. Um, they have a mentor program. Then they have like things of just like uh, 
who you should be like reporting stuff to and then also like physicians so like you have the fellows residents you have the attendings you you have like the team you have the critical care team like it's just so many people that's in the pot like it even is like soft tissue ortho that you have to like communicate with so that's pretty much there um you also have like um if you need to put in a wound consult order like we can consult the wound care nurse we can talk to the pharmacist about like different meds that they have um respiratory therapist is big on there um substance abuse um which is very heavily in the baltimore area um speaking of case management you know setting up stuff like that boop, 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 boop. um this is like references for like when you're admitting a patient um documentation required iv tubing and central line care like when you should be changing your drips when you should be changing your like dressings all that iv compatibility which i have found because sometimes patients have so many freaking drips that you have to chicken foot like it into a line you need to know which i like which meds are compatible so like your pressure should be with your pressure sedation should be with your sedation etc um type and scream those things are very important for your patient to have blood so i always put like okay fourth day if i'm working night shift okay is it the fourth day since that last type and screen i'm gonna write that on my sheet like how i had on my report sheet so uh, okay when i draw my labs at four o'clock in the morning i'm getting the type and screen as well um boop, boop, boop. this is just more like epic stuff patient care stuff okay moving on um this is like drips and different medications your titration and I really love like visuals. So they have this PowerPoint on drips, um, inotropics, dilators, and pressors, which is like very nice. Um, yeah, I showed my hospital, whatever. I'm gonna boot that out. <laughs> um, so yeah, so they have things like that on there. And then doo -doo, give me one second, I'm trying to like flip through this. Uh, ketamine, which is like very big on our unit as well. Um, they have like when you're using them bags, like when you're paralyzing patient, like the train of four. All those things. Then we have the policies and procedures where to find them because Jayco be on it like nobody's business. Um, we have like the fever guidelines to when you're gonna fever pack a patient. Um, and just different protocol for that. We have suicide screening, spinal cord um screening. So like if a patient has spinal cord which I love because I had the experience for my practicum was like knowing how to ace wrap these patients before getting them in the bed, um, TED stockings, all that stuff. And then knowing that they can only be in the chair for two hours. So that protocol and then knowing if they have avoided, you know, you have to straight cap them a certain amount of time. We have trick care, um, targeted temperature management for after cardiac arrest. Um, some of this is like, guided towards icu but like it's so good for if you're now you don't know what you're going into or you're um not in icu like just knowing it they have the pulmonary um artery catheters like managing at those the different values that you need to know which i messed up on was central venous pressure wow not central whatever besides the point um that is in there then we have more like things, EDDs are in here. Um, I'm trying to go fast. Oh, blood transfusions. Um, that's like, they have all that kind of information in here. Um, MTEs, which are like massive transfusions events. Um, they have, which I need to like sit down and actually like read verbatim because sometimes, you want to be able to advocate for your patient like respiratory standpoint, but they have different mechanical ventilation settings um, and what you should do when you're trying to wean these patients off of it. Um, yeah, it's more PowerPoints on just like understanding um, ventilators. Um, pulmonary catheters, they have all that information, the parameters, values, and um, the insertion tubing, so like your tubing almost like set up like um, a line. Oh, and then they also have like for organ donation, which I haven't had to do, but brain death and like 
um, your patient potentially being an organ donor when you should call Living Legacy and Living Legacy, you know, is in charge of all that information and guiding the family. Um, they also have like information on brain injuries with um, diabetes insipidus, um, all that kind of things, um, brain death testing. I mean, some of this is kind of like ringing a bell from nursing school for me. So like looking and glancing over the information, like I remember what it is. But then we have like lumbar drainages, those like kind of references. Um, when the patient has a um, EVD, we have ICP um, wavelengths that show us that it's working. When it's not working, what you should do. That's really bulk of that. And then the last part is just like scheduling, you know, taking off of work, blah, blah, blah. So I want to show you guys because the unit has been doing this and I came from like a unit that was like so heavy on this, like, um, well, the unit that I came from where you basically gave your system and not the resident. And then the plan of care was based off of your assessment. But for this unit, like, you know, I've learned that you can correct them if their assessment is wrong. But this is like a daily go sheet for your patient. Um, it has like, you know, your head to toe. So they're trying to figure out, okay, like, are we changing their um, pain or sedation meds? Then we write this here. Um, maybe they're going from Q1 to Q4 neurovascular check. So you can have this here if they have any drips. So that the night shift nurse can like glance over this if they need to. Or the next day shift nurse can see if there was any loopholes and that was not communicated to the night shift or would so have it so yeah so they have head to toe so like sometimes patients are on um a map goal of greater than 65 or blood pressure is systolic um between 100 to 120 um if they're getting extubated if they're changing vent settings like two tube feeds or if we're going to do water flushes um if they're on crt are we going to diarrhea the patient we're going to fever pack the patient. Maybe they're on antibiotics and okay, oh, they're going to end their antibiotics on this specific day so that they can be aware. Um, they have a skin, so like wound care, getting them out of the bed, um, DVT prophylaxis. Um, if the patient is going to go into any travels to CT, MRI, OR, all that, you can write that. Um, any bedside procedures, you can write that there. Renewals of like restraints. And that's pretty much it. Oh, also they have communications for if like they're gonna have family meetings so that you can set up a family meeting. Let the um uh, um ongoing or yes, the on oncoming nurse know about this. Um, whether the patient is like still ICU status or like a push, so push to IMC. So I really actually really like this. Um, it's pretty helpful and also looking in the um computer system for like the notes of the um attending or if it was a fellow they have notes added so sometimes like plan is missed so i like reading the notes on that but yeah this is in my ic well i should say my work bag i don't know why i keep saying IC. it's so weird anyway this is what's inside my work bag um and it's very suitable and it's like good for me i can walk around so I hope you guys like this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you did or if you would like me to do more nursing related stuff. But um, I hope I gave some tips on like what's inside my book bag and how I use it um, or knowing if you a book bag girl versus a purse bag um, girl. So yeah, see y'all.